Bible declares that they heard Paul and they heard Barnabas and they got excited about what God was doing. So Peter said, listen, we can't judge these folks because I see God moving for the Gentiles like he's doing for the Jews. So he sent Paul and Barnabas to go back and tell everybody, you don't have to be circumcised to be saved. I'm glad of the change. But the Bible says that Paul and Barnabas, when they got together, a brother by the name of John Mark tried to go back with them. But Paul had an attitude. He said, listen, when we went to Pamphylia, we brought this brother with us. And when the heat came on us, I couldn't find him. I ain't wasting my time with a jack-legged preacher. Let him stay home. Barnabas said, hold on. This is my boy. You remember how I found you? Don't you get too high. Because he can come with us. But Paul got mad. He said, well, if you're bringing him, then I'm out. Lord have mercy. And Barnabas said, bye-bye. Peace. We don't need you. So you found that Barnabas took John Murphy and did his own thing. That's just like the devil. And Paul found a man that was a prophet by the name of Silas. Lord have mercy. They got apostles that can't get along. They got prophets that can't see past their nose. It's all about relationship. They got to stay together. Do somebody high five. If they stay together. Just stay together. Yeah. Can I help you? When you don't stay together, it attracts demons. When strife and contention is in the church, it attracts demons. When division is among us, it attracts demonic activity. And so, this time, when Paul goes back, here comes a young soothsayer. She had spirits of demonic influence that showed up in his ministry. He would go to church just to go pray. And she would be on the steps. Saying, these be the men of the Most High God. She would do that for the whole campaign. When the apostles would go to pray, she would still be there and yell out in the city, these be the men of the Most High God. When I read that at first, I said, God, what's the problem with that? Because what she was saying was the truth. These men were sent by you. But God told me, he said, listen, son, you just missed it. Because if they came from me, then how can the devil still be around at the church saying and talking when I show up? The devil's got to get out of She was saying it was right, but it wasn't right. What she said was the truth, but she was living a lie. And I'm going to tell you, I came to kill some witches. I came to the spirit of Jehu to destroy every Jezebelic influence.
Because God is doing a shift. The woman shows up at church Preach. with the same lie in her mouth. So the Bible says Paul got grieved and he rebuked the spirit out of her. Spirit left and she lost her power. The men she worked for called her in for a meeting. They wanted her to pay this week's salary. Who you made money from? Preach it. She said, I ain't made no money. Why not? Because the gift is gone. What do you mean? The gift is gone. Can't you conjure it up? What do you mean? You've been doing this for us for years. Now how all of a sudden today, you don't got no more power. She said, the men of God came to the city. I'm here to tell you. When we show up, something should change in the atmosphere. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Hallelujah. Okay, Hallelujah. How could we dance? Demonic influence has got to change. Say it. When God moves you to the next level of power, everybody ain't going to celebrate you. I used to think that the more anointing you get, the more people will pat you on the back and say, good job, but the devil is a liar. I'm finding out the higher you go, the more people want to pull you down. So the marketplace workers got together. Good. I'm here to tell you, 
Some prayers don't get answered until you get it straight with somebody. Right. Oh, see, I know he, he's on Jesus. See, I'm going. See, some folks want to pray and dance on the mess. Lord Jesus. I found out that tongues ain't the only tongue folk talk in the church. They be cussing too. See, I love Jesus. He ain't like that. Too. How many know you got some folk that cuss in the church? Uh -huh, you must be one of them because you can't say amen. Uh, Lord, I didn't say everybody cussing. I said there's some folk that cuss in the church. As a matter of fact, you got some folk that will cuss you out, speak in tongues, and they won't even say praise the Lord to you at the end of the service. Y'all not talking to me. Y'all probably here to hear preach, so let me preach it. See, see sometimes we got to understand that God wants us to make some changes here so we can get what we need from the Lord. Tell somebody, help me, help me, help me. I brought that up. I feel like Jerry McGuire. Help me, help you. Uh, just help me help you. Can y'all help me help you tonight? Uh, I, I don't feel like I'm just talking to myself. GT, can you help me tonight? I, I just need to help somebody. But you can't do this thing by yourself. So he made a move. Tell somebody Paul made a move. But it came with some consequences. See, I don't want everyone to think that when you shift with God, everything going to be rosy. There's sometimes when you did the will of God and some hell came out. The reason why God allowed some hell to come behind it because he's going to get the glory out of it. How many of you been praying? And it seems like it's getting hotter. It ain't letting up on you. How many of you been praying in the name of Jesus? And the more you say Jesus, see like the more the devil shows up. Talking to some real folk. So you just gotta be real. You gotta be real. That you've been praying, you've been fasting, calling God, and it seems like things are getting worse instead of better. Let me tell you what happened. The man did what God called him to do. The man is going in to preach and establish churches. He goes back to give them the good news that you don't need to be circumcised. He rebukes this demon out of this girl, and now they're gonna arrest him. Arrest all inside. Yeah. Yeah. But not just arrest him. Yeah. Beat him. Yeah. Preach. Preach. Lord have mercy. You have an apostle and a prophet linked up together. In this apostolic prophetic age, there's a shifting going on. And apostolically, there has to be government and order in the house and in our lives. And prophetically, we got to hear the voice of God and get the right direction. So even in this shifting, folks are confused. You know why folks are confused? Because things are out 